I want to talk to you about an aspect of the gold and silver market that is not being addressed in the alternative media. As we've seen the price of gold and silver smash down in order to drive people out of their physical and paper holdings, we are seeing a buying frenzy towards the acquisition of physical gold and silver. This is creating, or at least we are being told, a physical shortage of these metals in the market. There appears to be an orchestrated attempt to relieve private holders of their gold and silver physical and paper assets at the focal point of the power centralization structure to consolidate these holdings in the hands of the few elite who are manipulating the markets. We saw in April and May of 2011 gold and silver soar to all-time highs of $1,849 per ounce respectively. This, looking back on what we know now, was an attempt to get private holders to sell, grab a quick, quick profit, and therefore consolidate the holdings in the coffers of the few. This plan did not work. As a matter of fact, physical gold and silver purchases by private investors like you and me increased, having the opposite effect desired by the elites. This is the old problem, reaction, solution with a twist. The problem being the masses are waking up to the fact that currency isn't money and have slowly been sh but surely been trying to preserve their wealth by converting currency into physical gold and silver. The reaction, at least the one they'd hoped for, was that if they could lift the lid on prices, so to speak, temporarily, this would cause a selling frenzy by which the elite could then pick up the excess supply from a sell-off as prices slid back down. The solution they were counting on was to reduce the holdings of precious metals in the hands of the public and concentrate or centralize those quantities in the hands of the elite. Just recently, we saw a smash down in precious metals. Their goal was the same. As fear is a greater motivator than greed, the powers that be attempted to orchestrate a panic which would result in a fear-driven rush of people selling their physical metals by creating an illusion or fear that your gold and silver would continue to lose value. This attempt backfired as well as many of us took this as an opportunity to buy, not GLD or SLV paper, but physical gold and silver. In addition, many people holding paper precious metals attempted to convert their paper holdings into physical gold and silver unsuccessfully. They have one more card that they've been holding and it may only be a matter of time before they play that card. And that card is to collapse or bankrupt the precious metals mining industry. If they play that card, they will own the extraction, production, and distribution of precious metals. And distribution won't be available to you or me. So, what do we know? Number one. A manufacturing company, whether they're producing widgets or precious metals, cannot continue to produce and sell in the market while having the price that they can sell their product for suppressed by the markets or exchanges they're trading on without incurring significant profit losses. Number two, the mining industry in general is one of the most costly endeavors with respect to costs versus units produced. Number three, gold and silver prices in particular have been being suppressed for quite some time now. Number four, this is being further compounded by the endless printing of money by the Fed, which is causing rising inflation in the cost of everything, including the cost of operations. But unlike other industries that are free to increase the cost of goods being sold in the market to maintain a reasonable profit margin, the precious metals markets are not. Therefore, while other manufacturing industries are able to maintain a reasonable profit margin, gold and silver mining industries are incurring shrinking profit margins and mounting losses. And it's also important to note that gold and silver right now are subject to all-time high premiums on the purchase of these metals from the brokers 
and or I should include the banksters in that too. So therefore, if you buy from a broker or an exchange, those premiums are going to those brokers and exchanges and not to the mining industries. So I would encourage anybody, if you are a regular buyer of gold and silver, go to the mines to buy, give them your money and any premiums that are charged, let them go to the mines to help offset their operations. Number five, the BRICS nations are aggressively acquiring massive amounts of physical gold and silver while other European nations are demanding their US holdings back with to no avail with delays and outright refusals coming from the US government. Number six, the COMEX is openly discussing a near-term default or collapse due to physical demand that cannot be met, along with the lesser discussed issue of the naked short sales of SLV and GLD paper that cannot be covered with physical inventories, even if they were to extract all of the gold and silver that's in the ground. In November of 2010, it was reported that there were 56,048 silver contracts that were sold short, or 280.2 million ounces of silver paper sold with no backing. And even if you calculate the 116.1 million ounces available to be mined out of the ground, that leaves a total shortfall of 164.1 million ounces of silver sold that simply does not exist and this is according to the CFTC. These discrepancies have been increasing over the past two and a half years. Number seven, JP Morgan's reported a staggering drop of 1.2 million ounces or $1.8 billion in the physical gold stockpiles in their vaults over only the past 120 days, with JP Morgan stating, and I quote, the how and why these stockpiles are being removed at such a rapid rate is a mystery, end quote. I find the term being removed in this context, instead of, say, being converted or being depleted, rather odd, since the term being removed denotes something being taken versus something being traded or converted. That statement by JP Morgan should send up a red flag that something big is on the horizon regarding physical gold and silver. Number eight, the COMEX is openly contemplating default due to what they claim is a surmounting inability to cover outstanding orders and now is refusing to convert contracts to physical gold and silver and offering cash only settlements on larger contracts rather than making physical deliveries. Number nine, a physical shortage in gold and silver continues to rise, yet prices in the precious metals continue to fall, and they are still way below the 2011 highs reached. This makes absolutely no sense in a properly functioning capitalist-based economy. The price of a commodity in high demand and short supply rises. It doesn't fall. In conclusion... Number one, the market manipulation of precious metals and massive currency devaluation is putting excessive pressure on the gold and silver mining industry. Number two, past efforts by the power elites to remove our physical holdings of precious metals and centralizing these metals into their hands were an epic fail. Number three, We've been seeing the shutdown of the precious metals mining operations in the U.S. in places like Utah, Idaho, Montana, as well as shutdowns in places in countries like Africa, Chile, and Australia, to name a few. And this short list, list doesn't cover the production slowdowns globally, which with currency devaluation and rising inflation combined with precious metals price suppression will only result in an inevitable shutdown in these areas as well. Number four, a looming COMEX default or collapse could result in the suspension of trading of precious metals for a period to be, to be determined by the global power elite, which would equate to sudden death for the gold and silver mining industry, forcing them into bankruptcy. 
Number five, a continuation of the trends outlined in this presentation will inevitably lead to a collapse, leaving these private and state-owned mining operations ripe for takeover by the power elites. Number six, people are waking up to the fact that the markets are manipulated. They are coming to the realization that the COMEX is a fraudulent criminal operation and they're scurrying to remove their assets from the custodianship of the COMEX to safer havens. The power elite are running out of options. The collapse of the precious metals mining industry and subsequent takeover would ultimately render total control of the extraction, production, and distribution in particular gold and silver in their hands. I hope this video has shed some light on the bigger picture of what is or what may be happening in the gold and silver markets. Think about this. When, not if, but when the currency collapses and the power elite control all aspects of precious metals, the extraction, production, and distribution. They can set the price at whatever they want. And what if the global elites decide the new currency system will be based on gold and silver? What if they set that price not at $3,000 an ounce, but at $300 an ounce or $30 an ounce? Remember, you and I won't be able to acquire any more than we already have at the time of a mining industry collapse. And if a play like this were to be put into action, you and I would find ourselves waking up one day in abject poverty overnight. Now, I'm not sitting on the sidelines um, with no dog in this fight. I too converted all, all of my paper assets into physical gold and silver several years ago, seeing the economy at that time heading to where it is now. So I too am at risk should a play like this uh, come down. The collapse and takeover of the precious, mine, precious metals mining industry is a very real possibility given the conditions and trends laid out here. I look forward to your comments. This is an issue we really need to address and I encourage everyone to have an open dialogue on this subject. Time is running out. Please share this video with everyone. Thank you.